The coronavirus pandemic has dealt a harsh blow to countless retailers, many of which were already struggling. But some retail stocks are on a tear. The California-based purveyor of high-end furniture, known as RH, formerly Restoration Hardware, is doing rather well. This is despite the fact that the company's stock price had cratered in March 2020 and struggled in early April, as the coronavirus forced lockdowns and other measures that endangered retail. Shares plummeted on news RH was cutting jobs and furloughing workers in response to the pandemic. But by December 1st, shares had rebounded and risen more than 110% since the beginning of the year. Over the last few years, the business has been thriving and major investors, such as Warren Buffett, have taken stakes in the company. Over its lifetime, RH has weathered serious challenges and transformed from a quirky seller of retro hardware to a high-end interior design and furnishings company. Management is now ambitiously trying to turn it into a global luxury brand, providing an array of services. But investors do wonder if it will be able to pull everything off. Founder Stephen Gordon had the idea for the store after he found difficulty locating historically accurate hardware for an old Queen Anne Victorian house he was restoring. In 1980, Gordon opened the first restoration hardware in a historic section of Eureka, a coastal city in Northern California. The company got its first major injection of outside equity funding in 1994. Subsequently, it began expanding more rapidly, professionalizing management and upgrading financial and IT systems. There were just five stores at the end of 1994, 10 stores in 1995, 20 in 1996, and 41 by the end of 1997. The restoration hardware of that time sold a lot of what might be described as folksy Americana, but with a kind of upscale twist. For example, it sold the Teddy Chair, a replica of a custom leather chair used by Theodore Roosevelt when he traveled by train. The eclectic and nostalgic blend of products was meant to set the store apart from other furniture shops and to connect with customers. A 1998 filing reads, the company focuses on products that have a sense of history or authenticity to which customers can relate. Believing that consumers have a strong desire to return to traditions from their past or create traditions where none previously existed. By the late 90s, Restoration Hardware was already staging inventory to give the customer a sense of being in an actual house. The hope was that seeing several items arranged together on a shop floor might inspire a customer to simply buy the whole setup that day and spare the trouble of decorating a room from scratch. Prices on items could vary and weren't always high, especially when it came to the small retro knickknacks sprinkled throughout the store. But by the 1990s, the average customer was aged between the mid-30s and mid-50s, making at least $75,000 a year, about $120,000 in 2020 terms. RH went public in 1998. From there, shares climbed. But by 2001, the company was close to bankruptcy. It was around that time that current CEO Gary Friedman took the top job, reportedly after he was passed over for the CEO role at his former employer, William Sonoma. Friedman, who grew up in San Francisco and the surrounding Bay Area, became a driving force at the company, to the point that many people argue Restoration Hardware's characteristic style is really a reflection of Friedman's personal taste. Under Friedman, Restoration Hardware rebranded as RH, Friedman pushed the brand further toward furniture and high-end home goods. He is known for responding to questions or criticisms about the company's luxury aims and higher prices by saying, great brands don't chase customers, customers chase great brands. Sort of the, the most innovative and interesting uh, part of the story really started almost a decade ago now when they started rolling out these new, very experiential design galleries and with the opening of RH Chicago when they introduced uh, their first hospitality experience, I think that really brought the brand into uh, where it is today. 
In 2007, RH went private in a $267 million deal with a group of investors led by Catterton Partners, a Connecticut-based private equity firm that at the time also had investments in P.F. Chang's China Bistro and Build-A-Bear Workshop, among others. The company went public again in 2012, as the country was beginning to recover from the financial crisis of 2008. RH listed on the New York Stock Exchange at a share price of $24. But in the lead-up to the IPO, Friedman stepped down, reportedly after an internal investigation into a relationship he had with an employee. Friedman stayed on in an advisory role. The incident didn't seem to tarnish the company in the eyes of investors. Friedman got his job back within a year. And in the three years following the IPO, shares climbed dramatically to a high of $105.53 on November 4th, 2015. Trouble surfaced again in 2016 when RH rolled out a membership program. For an annual fee of $100, a customer can get a 25% discount on merchandise, an additional 20% on sale items, concierge services, and other perks. It was not unlike the kinds of memberships used by retailers in very different segments, such as Costco and Amazon Prime. At first, customers balked, hurting sales, and RH also had some trouble with distribution, especially with its RH Modern line, furniture that leaned toward minimalist and other contemporary design styles. Shares tanked throughout 2016 and into the early months of 2017. But at that time, RH and its management, including Friedman, began buying back the company's stock at depressed prices, pushing the share price back up. It also continued investing in its business and its brand, while ironing out some of the issues it had with its membership and the RH Modern line that had plagued it. Now, starting with their uh, removal of most discounts and their introduction of their membership program, they really started elevating their brand. Uh, they added a lot of experiences to their stores. People wanted to visit their stores, wanted to hang out at their barista bars and their restaurants. Um, and the brand really has just become more elevated and that has given them a fair amount of pricing power, which flowed through into their gross margins and their profitability. So you've seen very strong uh, gross margins and very strong profit growth from this company over the last couple of years primarily from that driver more than any other. Other investors took notice. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway firm took a 6.5% stake in 2019, making it, at the time, RH's fifth largest shareholder. The company has also adapted to the growing influence of e-commerce, which, combined with source books and phone orders, makes up about 40% of RH's sales. But RH's 68 galleries, 38 outlets, and 14 waterworks, bath, and kitchen showrooms are all a key piece of its business model. It turns out that customers at the higher end of the furniture market like to see and touch the products they are investing in. They started building these very luxurious, aspirational, uh, retail galleries and not only are they driving you know significant foot traffic but they are also the uh, yielding uh, you know much higher margins than they previously had and this is especially true at those galleries which have a uh, rooftop restaurant on them they generate significantly higher traffic and ultimately end up having much higher unit economics. RH stores located in cities or other key markets are almost landmarks. Some are even located in historic buildings. A great deal of attention goes into the exterior and interior of the store. The company's aim is to create an experience for the shopper unlike any other. Each room of the store is fully furnished and made to look like a scene, one that might resemble a living room, bathroom, kitchen, and so on. This, the company says, encourages the customer to buy several pieces at once, recreating the scene they see in the store. The coronavirus seemed to actually boost the company's business after shares plummeted in March. The company said it would permanently eliminate 440 jobs and temporarily furlough 2,300 workers, with top executives foregoing 100% of their salaries until the business stabilized. The company also said it would be reducing its capital expenditures by $130 million and expenses by $150 million for the fiscal 2020 year. Shares fell again on the heels of the announcement. 
But since then, they have soared to an all-time high of $524.22 on February 11, 2021. In September, Friedman said he thought RH is benefiting from shifts in how consumers are spending their money. There's uh, clearly uh, you know, a, sh a consumer shift that's happening. Uh, and, you know, people are holed up at home. Uh, you know, they're focused on their homes. The company's sales are being boosted by the pandemic. Uh, so two elements to that. One is there's a wallet share shift. So people are spending more on their homes and things in their homes rather than on uh, travel and entertainment, uh, given those options are limited. Uh, and two, uh, we're seeing the higher end individuals uh, not impacted nearly as much uh, as the lower income individuals. Uh, so that plays into the company's sweet spot. Meanwhile, the brand is continuing to see how it can expand. Friedman has said he thinks as much as two thirds to three quarters of RH's business could be outside the United States, in line with other major global luxury brands such as LVMH and Hermé. He also wants to continue expanding the brand outside furniture. While Friedman has spoken admirably of similar international luxury powerhouses, he has also expressed admiration for Apple, primarily for its ability to bring customers into an ecosystem of products and services. He has said he wants to capture some of that brand loyalty with RH. RH has indicated that it plans to expand its architecture, interior design, and landscape services platform, which could provide the company with another source of growth. We think services are a really interesting component to the RH story. Now, when they rolled out their membership model in 2016, one of the perks that comes with it is you get a free uh, designer that'll help you, you know, figure everything out, set up, uh, you know, the the home and the uh, furniture that you're going to purchase. Now, we think that the brand has, you know, a lot more uh, room to run and really lean into this uh, interior design part of the business because what we think it will do is it'll make both the shoppers much stickier and have them come back for additional pur purchases. And additionally, it'll really allow RH to turn a small project into a much bigger project. The company is also moving into hospitality and tourism. It has been building what it calls a guest house in New York City. In January of 2021, the company made a $105 million investment in a real estate development project in Aspen, Colorado, which will include a gallery, a guest house, spa, restaurants, and homes. International expansions by U.S. retailers abroad have frequently failed, though RH's luxury identity might put it in a better position. Investors say that each of RH's many plans, design services, the hotels, and so on, require a lot of attention and money. The question is, can a brand that is primarily known for furniture become credible as an architectural and landscaping design firm? The other risk is that RH becomes a victim of its own success. For example, the company pulled in $844 million in sales in the quarter ending in October 2020, up from $677.5 million in the same quarter of 2019. This sort of success might become the benchmark against which investors measure future performance. RH has proven extremely adaptive to changing times, capable of remaking itself, and attracting a loyal set of well-heeled customers. Investors hope it will stay that way.